tell me swear or affirm the testimony I'm about to give be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, not be God. Please have a seat, Ms. Gonzalez. Give us just one minute. Good morning. Good morning. Please introduce yourself to the jury. My name is Rosa Gonzalez. With whom are you employed, ma'am? The Knoxville Police Department. In what capacity? I am a crime scene technician and certified as a crime scene analyst through the International Association for Identification. <clears throat> How long have you been so employed? I've been with KPD for about five years. Were you so employed in February of 2021? I was. What are some of the duties and responsibilities in your particular job? We respond to various scenes involving property crimes, major crimes such as homicides and shootings, among others, and our role there is to uh, document, collect, and preserve the evidence. And in documenting and preserving that evidence, does that include taking photographs? It does. In uh, obtaining and collecting uh, evidence, what are some of the things that you collect? We collect a number of things. It could be victims' clothing, uh, it could be firearms, collect DNA, casings. And in this particular case, did you work with another crime scene technician? I did, I worked with several. So in regards to this particular case, were there instances in which you went to multiple locations? Yes. And in those locations, you did a number of things. Correct. So let's talk about the uh, acquisition of some clothing. Okay. Um, what type of clothing did you acquire? I responded to a scene on Wilson Avenue and I collected a victim's clothing that was there. I'm going to show you some of that and ask if you can identify that. show you some photographs marked as exhibit 209 to 219 and ask if you can identify them. Yes, these are photographs I took of the clothing at our lab and on Fifth Avenue. We would offer those exhibits, Your Honor. Any objections? No. Very well. May we publish?
So in Exhibit 209, what are we looking at? This is a picture of a uh, sweatshirt and jeans that I collected from the scene. And it appears as if those particular items are on some sort of piece of uh, paper? Yes. And what's the purpose of that? Just to prevent uh, contamination of the clothing. In 210? That is a picture of one of the shoes, some items that were found with the clothing, and a black t-shirt that I also collected from the scene. Is there another uh, item that's in between the shoe and the piece of clothing? Yeah, it's like a charging block and a white case of some sort. And these all were obtained at the Wilson Avenue scene? Yes. 211? This is a picture of, a, of that same black uh, sweatshirt that I collected from the scene. I have used scales to mark what I appeared, what I thought uh, appeared to be bullet defects. And is that normal and usual for you to mark particular items of clothing if there's a bullet defect? Yes. And that's what you did here with those two markings? Yes. Exhibit 212? This is the black t-shirt and I did the same thing there with the scale. Uh, the scale indicating a what appeared to be a bullet defect. Yes. Two thirteen. That's just a close-up picture of the charging block in that case. And two fourteen. This is the front view of that black sweatshirt, and again, I used a scale there to mark what appeared to be a bullet defect. Two fifteen. That's just another angle of that same sweatshirt. It appears to be the front? Yes. 260. It's a close-up of that uh, same sweatshirt with that scale. Indicating a, a bullet defect? Yes. 217. This is a picture of the jeans. That's the, um, the front of them. And would it be fair to say that those are um, cut open on the inseam? Yes. And that's how you received them at the time? Yes, I did. That's how they were uh, found on scene. Usually it gets, uh, they get, the clothing gets cut off by EMS. 218. That's another view of the um, black t-shirt. And 219. And then there I marked it with a scale, what appeared to be another bullet defect. Before we open that, can you describe for the jury what that container is? Yes, this is uh, packaging from the medical examiner's office. So you received these items from the medical examiner and they were packaged for you? Yes, when we pick up evidence, they're already packaged. Okay. And what is inside? Um, this is going to be um, a shoe, black and red. confiscated from the medical examiner's office? Yes. Okay. 
We would offer that exhibit, Your Honor. These particular items of clothing that you've shown the photographs of, including those shoes, you had indicated that you had placed them on this paper. And what was the purpose of placing these items on the paper? To prevent cross-contamination. Okay. Were any of the items taken and put into a facility at your location for drying purposes? Yes. So when I collected them from the scene, it was a wet day, so the ground was wet. And so when I took it back and after I photographed them, all the items that I took these photographs of went into the drying chamber. One of the pants appeared to have RBS on it or reddish-brown stain. So we always put them in the drying chamber to make sure that evidence doesn't get destroyed. RBS, reddish-brown stain, can mold easily, so we want to make sure that it's completely dry before it gets packaged or anything. These particular items went to the medical examiner's office after I had already placed them in the drying chamber. So before they went to the medical examiner, you took them and dried them out and packaged them? Correct. I'd like to show you Exhibit 345. May I approach? What is Exhibit 345? Can you tell from the bag? I can. It's the blue pants. Okay. Would you please show them to the jury? If we have some scissors, Dave, that would be easier. Yeah, I think so. Thank you. If you'd like to come down and you can take them off. Yes, sir, please. And what are those? We would offer that exhibit, Your Honor. Any objection to 345? Yeah. The 345? There's a hanger in there, so I'm objecting to the hanger. Okay. That's probably just for drying, I assume. So, yeah, we can pull the hanger out and just keep the pants in there. We'll do it later. The pants are what's in evidence right now. We'll figure the hanger out later. Yeah, we'll take it out later. I'm just saying. Yes, if the witness could explain why the hanger's there, maybe that would be helpful. Yes. So, when we took items from our drying chamber, we placed them on the So, just to be clear, folks, it's the pants that the item of evidence, not the hanger. That's just, you can consider that as packaging, okay? You may continue. Thank you. The next item is 346, which is the coat. You can explain to the jury from the outside of the bag what is contained in there. There you go. Thank you. 
that's a sweatshirt. We removed that exhibit as well. Any objection? No objection, but the same. Yeah, 346, so it's the coat, the sweatshirts, that's the exhibit, folks, not the hanger in the bag. Okay, that's just in there to keep it all together. that exhibit as well. Any objection? No. At some point in time, did you have an opportunity to view, examine, and photograph a uh, blue Nissan Altima? I did. And where did that take place? Um, it happened at the at our garage at our Fifth Avenue lab. Is that something that you normally <coughs> have been called upon to do in the past? Yes. I'll show you what's been marked as exhibits. Yes, I was present when these photographs were taken. Any objection? Two twenty two, two thirty eight. May we publish? You may publish. So 
In Exhibit 202, what are we looking at? This is a picture uh, of that uh, Nissan Altima. And it's in your Fifth Avenue garage? It is. And when you say that you process uh, a vehicle, what's involved in your processing the vehicle? When we process a vehicle, we usually uh, start with photographs and then we f and fingerprints and then uh, DNA. And if there are, are any other items that would be considered evidence, do you confiscate those as well? We do. Very good. So that's the Nissan Altima 203? Let's I'm sorry, 220? That's a picture of the interior driver door. And the next one? That's a picture from the driver door looking into the car. 222. It's a picture of a shell casing on the driver's seat. Would that be an example of a piece of evidence that you would want to confiscate? Yes. And did you do so in this instance? Yes. 223. Here's a picture of the driver's side floorboard area. Are you able to see the uh, spent cartridge in the driver's seat in that particular picture as well? Yes, I can see too. In the lower right-hand corner? Yes. 224. Here's a close-up photograph of the casing on the driver floorboard. Yet another piece of evidence that you desire to con confiscate. Yes. 225. A picture of the central console area. 226. Inside of the center console storage compartment. 227. A picture from the passenger side looking in. 228. A picture of the interior uh, passenger door. 229. A picture of the interior rear passenger door. 230. That's a picture looking in from the rear passenger door looking into the car. The next one. And this is uh, just from a different angle from the rear driver's side door. And the next one. The trunk. Next. Here we use placards to mark where those casings were. Next. A close-up of the casing on the seat. And the next. The casing on the floorboard with the placard number two. This was a uh, black sweatshirt that was found in the back seat. We used placard number three. Did you confiscate that as well? Yes. The next. There's a picture of the glove box. And so that? That's a picture of the black sweatshirt. Um, and you put it on the black, on the brown paper? Yes. And the next. We'll, we'll stop at that. And we'll talk about the, the sweatshirt. <laughs> Exhibit 259. 
repackage that for us, please. And I've moved that into evidence. Yes, sir. It's in as 359. Shell casings that are marked as exhibits. The next numbered exhibits. This picture here is. This is a uh, general property envelope. Um, this is what uh, one of the kinds of envelopes that we use to package some of our evidence uh, before it gets turned into property. And inside that envelope, there's two other smaller, smaller envelopes. What is contained in that? The two shell casings from the car that were um, collected by Tech Health. <clears throat> so those shell casings that we saw you photograph, are those the same shell casings? The photographs were taken by Tech Health, but I was there. Okay. And those particular shell casings were confiscated? They were. And um, if you could, uh, we would move both of those exhibits into evidence now so that she can open them and display them. In fact, Do we know which is which, Mr. Miller? Can you tell which one is which from the placards? Yes. Please let the jury know. So if you right. look at the white sticker, tell us, like 364 there, tell us which one that is. Oh, 364. Yeah. Okay, it's this one here. And where was that one? Um, that placard one? Yes, yeah, so it says here on this white piece of paper, 364, exhibit number one. So this would be uh, placard number one in the vehicle. And 365 is placard two? 365 is plug or two. All right, let's do one at a time. 364. Is there a head stamp to that? There is. Can you describe what the head stamp purports to say? So on one end of the casing, um, there's like an open end, and then here's the other end. This is what we call the head stamp. This head stamp says Spear 45 Gap. And the other exhibit, you can put that back in the envelope. What does the head stamp say for that? It says Spear 45 Gap. You can put those back in the larger envelope. 
In addition to taking photographs and confiscating the sweatshirt and also the shell casings, what else did you do? I collected swaps from the vehicle from different parts and as well as some straws. Could you explain to the jury what you mean by that? Yes, so when we collect swaps, we collect them for DNA purposes and usually it involves the steering wheel of the gear shifter and there could be other areas of the car that we swap as well. And did you do that in this particular case? I did. We have a collective exhibit 360, which contains those items. May I approach you with this? So the outside of the envelope has the exhibit 360. Each of the individual items inside of that are marked exhibit 360A through F. Okay. I'd like you to look at them and see if those are the swaps and the straws that you have taken from the Nissan Altima. Yes. So going, you have four swaps, is that correct? That's correct. And three straws, is that right? Yes. So what's the difference? Well, these are the swaps. We have like cotton applicators and we use distilled water. We use a one wet, one dry method. So that means we put a little bit of distilled water on one of the tips of the cotton swab and then we'll take a set. And so, for example, these are from the steering wheel, so I would have swapped the steering wheel. I have another one here from the gear shifter, so I would have taken a different set of swaps and collected DNA from the gear shifter. There's one here from the driver's seat headrest and then another set from the passenger seat headrest. So at four different locations in Nissan, you took swaps and you attempted to acquire DNA? Correct. Your job is to acquire whatever evidence that you might be able to find in the car, is that right? Correct. And that's sent off someplace else for analysis? Yes. And with the straws, what's going on with that? So these straws came from, they were these cups in the center console area, so I had to cut some of the straws because some of the cups had like a creamy liquid substance. So I cut them and so I took, for example, this straw here is from like the Wendy's cup. There's another straw that came from a second Wendy's cup and then this straw came from the Taco Bell cup. So the straws are drinking straws? Yes. And so you wanted to confiscate them and send them off to testing the results? Correct. Can we move all the way to the front? Any objection to the collective 360? Very well. So what we've done so far is we've talked about the victim's clothes and we've talked about the work that you did at the Nissan Altima. You also went to Cathedral, is that right? Correct. Before we get into Cathedral, let me just make sure everybody's still okay. Anybody need a break? Very good. Press on. While the attorneys are looking over those photographs, before I offer them for you to review, can you describe generally what you and your colleagues did at the 1614 Cathedral Lane location? Yes, so we responded there in regards to a search warrant and I took photographs of both outside and inside the house and then collected a number of items of evidence from the house. 
and taking the photographs and collecting these items were part and parcel of what you do as a forensic tech, right? Correct. Did you also have an occasion to, in the course of your doing your work at Cathedral, make a diagram of that location, the house, and what the rooms were located in relationship to each other? Yes. Gabby, 